everyone, welcome back to the plant-based theory. Today we're going to talk about protein, the golden nutrient that everyone worships. All right, for this protein discussion, you're going to want to take a seat. I'm not kidding. I'm probably going to knock your socks off. Buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. I mean that wholeheartedly. Basically everything you ever thought about protein is probably not true. <laughs> Seriously, if you haven't sat down yet, take a seat. Okay, so protein, the golden nutrient uh, that everyone puts up on a pedestal and just eats like it's going out of style. What is protein? Back in theory seven, we learned that it's a macronutrient or in layman's terms, a big ass nutrient. We also learned that most foods are a mixture of all three or at least two macronutrients and that protein is not synonymous with meat. We also learned that protein is no more or less important than carbohydrates or fats and in fact is needed less percentage wise than carbohydrates and fats. And now that we're talking about protein, I'll let you in on a little secret that our bodies only need about 10% of our total calories from protein. I know. This goes for you athletes out there as well, but I'm going to address that more at the end. Yes, there is plenty of science to back this up and it has been well known for hundreds of years, but despite all the research and information out there, people still use the term protein synonymously with meat and since meat has been viewed as the royal food or the wealthy man's food, the science is ignored. Completely. They say we're the smartest animals on this planet, but at this point, I'm not too sure. So function-wise, unlike carbohydrates, which we learned are our main energy source, protein are basically our building blocks that um, help form our muscles and other tissues. To break protein down even further, they're made up of little parts called amino acids, which you've probably heard before. But what are amino acids made up of? We learned that carbohydrates are basically carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and amino acids are the same, except they also contain nitrogen. Now, guess what the only thing on this planet is that can pull nitrogen out of the atmosphere to make amino acids? We do a lot of guessing here, don't we? Plants! <laughs> That's right, all amino acids, and therefore all proteins, which are made up of amino acids, originate from plants. Do you get that? Whoa, are your socks off yet? I'm gonna say that again. All amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, originate from plants because plants are the only things that can pull nitrogen out of the atmosphere to make amino acids. Hmm. So people who turn to vegans or vegetarians and they're like, where do you get your protein? Guess what? We get it from the same place that the cow gets it from, that the gorilla gets it from, that the ant gets it from, etc. All these animals eat the plants to get their protein or carnivorous animals eat the other animals who ate the plants to get their protein. Basically, all animal protein is is recycled plant protein. <laughs> Yet somehow animal protein has become the safe nutrient and the golden nutrient, and I'm talking about meats, dairy, and eggs mainly. And like I said, we place it on a pedestal for all to marvel at. And then there's the processed food category, which dives right into the protein hype. And companies are literally throwing the word protein on anything that they produce because that's what people flock to. If it says protein bar or protein shake or protein cookie or protein donut, people will eat it just because that one little word is on the package. Would you eat a bar that said carbohydrate bar? No, because carbohydrates have been made out to be the enemy and proteins have been made out to be our friends. It's all bull. Everything has become about protein and how to increase your intake of protein. It's all gotten way out of control. I mean, take a step back for a second. Why are you trying to put more protein in your body? Do you even know? Do you have any idea what protein does to your body if you have too much protein, which is possible and highly common? If you don't know, then stop doing something just because some company or supplement or organization tells you that it's the right thing to do. They're just trying to make money. Stop giving them your money. And it's funny, when I talk to people who eat protein cookies or protein donuts or protein junk, and I'm like, really, why are you eating that? They're like, it has protein in it. And I'm like, so does poop. I literally say that. And they laugh, but I'm like, well, if that's your reasoning, why wouldn't you eat poop? Poop has protein in it. And they're like, well, but poop has a lot of gross things in it. 
guess what? So do cookies and donuts. You gotta stop justifying these shitty habits just because the word protein is on it. Let's talk about the term complete protein, which is completely misused, and I'll tell you why. A complete protein simply means that the protein has every single essential amino acid that our bodies need. Now, people use this term to sell their animal products because most animal products are complete proteins and most plant products are not. So you'll see things on packages like complete protein, you'll get all your amino acids, blah, 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 blah. Side note, there are plant foods that are complete protein, but most people don't know that. Most people promote complete proteins as only coming from animal sources. Not true. You've got quinoa, you've got soybeans, you've got chia seeds, there are more, but the point is, is plants do have complete proteins, but animal products generally have more. Now, this whole concept is just dumb, and here's why. We've forgotten about digestion. What do you think happens when you put meat in your pie hole? Do you think like you've got a, just a steak sitting in your stomach? No, we digest that steak or we digest that hot dog. I don't digest the hot dog because I don't eat hot dogs, but you get my point. We digest foods, we break them apart into their smallest forms and then we distribute them throughout our body wherever they're needed. So, riddle me this. What's the difference between eating a complete protein and breaking it down as we digest it into all of the individual amino acids where they're in our digestive system and then being absorbed into our body versus eating a variety of incomplete proteins and digesting them, breaking them down into their smallest forms. Suddenly you have all the amino acids floating around together and you absorb them and distribute them throughout your body. There's no difference. <laughs> your body will always break protein dense foods down into amino acids and distribute them wherever they're needed. It is completely irrelevant whether or not they all started in the same chunk of food or not. So if anyone tells you that you need to have complete protein sources, you can educate them on that. All right, so everyone's running towards protein. We need protein, we need protein, we need protein, we need protein. <laughs> it must be because we have a protein deficiency problem, right? I mean, why else would everybody be running towards protein? You see, only about 3% of the population is protein deficient, meaning they don't get adequate protein in their diet. Now, these people are generally starving themselves or just don't have food available to them. For anybody who is eating and has food available to them, you will not be protein deficient, promise. There was actually a study done about five and a half years ago on over 71,000 people to determine their nutrient profiles based on their nutrient preferences, meaning what nutrients did they have in them based on whether or not they were an omnivore, a vegetarian, a pescatarian, a vegan, etc. If we average protein requirements together, the average person needs about 42 to 45 grams of protein a day. Look what they found. As you can see in that left-hand column, everyone gets almost double that, regardless of their nutrient preferences, meaning it doesn't matter if you're vegetarian, vegan, omnivore, carnivore, none of us are carnivores, don't pretend like you are, everyone is over-consuming protein. <laughs> What's interesting is that the meat eaters get nearly half of their protein from plants. Hmm, if they were to cut out the meat, they'd have adequate protein, about 40 to 45 grams a day. Interesting. So we have all this information showing that almost everyone gets plenty of protein, almost double the protein they need, yet everyone is still flocking to protein. Yet we have all this information that people are severely deficient in many other nutrients and there's no concern to get those. What the hell is it with protein? Why are we obsessed? Stop with the protein hoarding. Okay, so what actually happens if we ingest too much protein? It depends what kind you're talking about, protein from plants or protein from animals. Animal proteins stress the kidneys, plant proteins do not. Animal proteins cause inflammation, plant proteins do not. IGF-1, which is a cancer-promoting hormone, is released in excess when we eat animal proteins. Doesn't happen with plants. Animal proteins come bearing hormones, saturated fat, antibiotics, pus, a slew of things that we really don't want in our body, and they also are void of fiber and many vitamins and minerals. Plant proteins are full of vitamins and minerals. We've already talked about this. They are abundant in health-promoting nutrients, and they don't have cholesterol or pus or <laughs> any of the other things that animal products have. People who aim to get their protein from plants versus animal product have lower body weight, decrease in body inflammation, 
lowered risk of all disease, and lower body fat percentage. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Is a hot dog really that tasty? I'm not gonna get into which plant foods provide what amount of protein because people need to stop obsessing about it. Most plant foods have protein and most will provide you with adequate amounts for your daily intake. Plus you'll get all the health promoting nutrients that come with it that most people are deficient in. It's a win-win. All right, now this is really gonna blow your mind. Are you ready? There have been studies that have shown that people who focus on cutting protein intake versus cutting calorie intake have a greater effect on their lifespan meaning people who cut protein, yet still eat the same amount of calories, have less disease and death than people who cut calories. That's because most people who cut calories are cutting themselves of nutrients that their body needs and they're starving themselves. That never works. We already learned that videos ago. But people who cut protein, because we're all swimming in the stuff, <laughs> and bring our protein levels back to what they should be, and get our kidneys to relax, and get our inflammation to calm down, our bodies start functioning better, we heal ourselves, we live longer, happier lives. I know, it's crazy. So if you wanna get healthy, lose weight, live longer, be happy, cut protein. Do not cut calories. More specifically, cut leucine. Leucine is an amino acid. We already learned that amino acids are the little building blocks of proteins. So leucine is just one of those little building blocks. But leucine has shown to increase several markers in our body when we ingest it that promote disease and premature aging. In a nutshell, they're the most harmful amino acid that we could ingest. Again, pop quiz. <laughs> Guess where this amino acid is found? Mainly in animals. It is in plants, but it's not in plants in the same amount that it's in animals. And it's not just in animal foods, it's in every friggin' supplement out there. All of these things, none of which are regulated by the way, are all bursting with leucine to help you build muscle and build muscles on your muscles. People think you need leucine because it has this like powerful effect. Well, you might build some muscles, but you're also gonna be building some inflammation, some autoimmune disease, some cancer, some diabetes. Who knows? You'll be building disease for sure though. Party on, Lucene, you sound like a rock star. And by the way, supplements are not regulated at all. So they're about as promising as my seventh grade boyfriend was when he asked me to marry him. All you really need to do, folks, is look at the people on this planet who are living the longest, healthiest lives. I'm talking about like the Okinawans or the Seventh-day Adventists of California and see that they eat little to no animal products. Their diets are based mainly around plant foods, whole plant foods, and they all have reduced disease, higher mental health levels, and they live until the end of time. There are also populations who at one point had no sign of westernized diseases. And when I'm talking about westernized diseases, I'm talking about all of the main diseases that are killing us off, okay? Heart disease, cancer, autoimmune disease, diabetes. These diseases just don't exist in certain populations that have not been westernized yet. But guess what happens when they adapt a westernized diet? The cancer creeps in, the autoimmune disease creeps in, the diabetes creeps in, high cholesterol creeps in. All these things start creeping in because they're adapting these heavily meat and animal product based diets. Basically, we're not only effing ourselves up, but we're effing up everybody else who follows our lead. Pat on the back to us. Last note, people who work out, unless you're trying to build muscles upon muscles in an attempt to lift 7,000 pounds above your head, you do not need to focus on increasing your protein intake. There's so much information out there now that just says you need to increase your calories, period. Okay, you need more carbs, you need more fats, you need more protein, you need more vitamins and minerals, you need more phytonutrients, you need more of everything. Why would we need just more of one nutrient? That doesn't make any, any sense. If you're using your body more, increase your calories. Don't just increase your protein. In summary, we're basically killing ourselves off early because we're listening to the propaganda from the meat and dairy industries on how we need their products and we need more protein and we're listening to the supplement companies about how we need their products to grow muscles and get big and strong. And it's all BS, complete BS. I'm not gonna get into the environmental and ethical reasons on why choosing plant protein sources over animal protein sources is vital, but just know that you'll be doing yourself and your planet a huge favor if you choose your protein sources from plants. Past that, plant sources provide all of the amino acids we need. They also provide vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients and all of those health-promoting, immune-boosting nutrients that we've been talking about, so there's no reason to try to go get your protein elsewhere. Hands down, you will be healthier and live longer if you get your protein from plants. End of story. 
So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. I'm guessing you learned a lot today. Go tell your friends that all protein comes from plants. That'll knock their socks off. I should be seeing socks all over the road. Subscribe if you're a YouTube user. Turn on the bell so you get the notifications and I will see you next time. Bye everybody.